do, all that I'll ever have I offer now to you, all that I am, all that I do, all that I'll ever have I offer now to you. All that I dream, all that I pray, all that I'll ever make, I give to you today. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good evening. Forgive the tilt. I don't know what happened. I had to straighten out, and I see now that it's tilted again. That's why Mass is a little bit late. I was having technical difficulties. Welcome to the new age. Brothers and sisters, to prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to our everlasting life. Today's Mass is being offered for Danny Kenny. Let us pray. Enlighten, O God, of compassion, the hearts of your children, sanctified by penance, and in your kindness, grant those who stir to a sense of devotion a gracious hearing when they cry out to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. Nebuchadnezzar, in furious rage, commanded that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be brought in. So they brought those men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods, and you do not worship the golden statue that I have set up? Now, if you are ready, when you hear the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, drum, an entire musical ensemble to fall down and worship the statue that I have made, well and good. But if you do not worship, you shall immediately be thrown into a furnace of blazing fire. And who is the God that will deliver you out of my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered the king, Well, Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to present a defense to you in this matter. If our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the furnace of blazing fire, and out of your hand, O king, let him deliver us. But if not, be it known to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods, and we will not worship the golden statue that you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar was so filled with rage against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that his face was distorted. He ordered the furnace heated up seven times more than was customary and ordered some of the strongest guards in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and to throw them into the furnace of blazing fire. The young men walked around in the midst of the flames, singing hymns to God and blessing the Lord. But the angel of the Lord came down into the furnace to be with Azariah and his companions, and drove the fiery flame out of the furnace, and made the inside of the furnace as though a moist wind were whistling through it. The fire did not touch them at all, and caused them no pain or distress. Then King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished and rose up quickly. 
He said to his counselors, Was it not three men that we threw bound into the fire? They answered the king, True, O king. He replied, But I see four men unbound walking in the middle of the fire, and they are not hurt, and the fourth has the appearance of a god. Nebuchadnezzar then approached the door of the furnace of blazing fire and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out, come here. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out from the fire, and the satraps, the prefects, the governors, and the king's counselors gathered together and saw that the fire had not had any power over the bodies of those men and the hair of their heads was not singed, their tunics were not harmed, and not even the smell of fire came from them. Nebuchadnezzar said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and delivered his servants who trusted in him. They disobeyed the king's command and yielded up their bodies rather than serve and worship any god except their own god. The word of the Lord. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you, O Lord, God of our ancestors, and blessed is your glorious and holy name. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you in the temple of your holy glory, and to be extolled and highly glorified forever. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you on the throne of your kingdom, and to be extolled and highly exalted forever. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you who look into the depths from your throne on the cherubim. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you in the firmament of heaven, to be sung and glorified forever. Glory and praise forever. Praise to you, Lord, King of eternal glory. Praise to you, Lord, King of eternal glory. Blessed are they who have kept the word with a generous heart and yield a harvest through perseverance. Praise to you, Lord, King of eternal glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered him, We are descendants of Abraham, and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying, You will be made free? Jesus answered them, Very truly, I tell you, Everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household. The son has a place there forever. So if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. I know that you are descendants of Abraham, yet you look for an opportunity to kill me because there is no place in you for my word. I declare what I have seen in the Father's presence. As for you, you should do what you have heard from the Father. They answered him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said to them, If you were Abraham's children, you would be doing what Abraham did. But now you are trying to kill me, a man who has told you the truth that I heard from God. This is not what Abraham did. You are indeed doing what your father does. They said to him, We are not illegitimate children. We have one Father, God himself. 
Jesus said to them, If God were your father, you would love me, for I came from God, and now I am here. I did not come on my own, but he sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. I have to plug in. Looks like our battery's going dead. And of course, I'm using the cord to try to hold the camera steady. And there we go, all nice and Okay, well, that technical interruption. Now, we have in our first reading the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, or Azariah, Hananiah, and Mishael. These three men were faithful, faithful to God. When they were threatened with death, they said to their king, if God is able to save us, well and good. But if not, we're not gonna do as you say and turn against our God. We're not going to worship your gods. We're not gonna worship false gods. We'd rather die than be absent from our one true God. And so we have in our gospel, Jesus speaking to the Jews who had believed in him. Now it's interesting, John said, had believed in him. So it sounds like they were starting to turn against him. And this is probably what happened when they started to listen to him more and more and realize that what he was saying was that he's the son of God and that he's going to give himself as food for human beings. And so these were teachings that they just could not take. And this is why Jesus said now they were trying to kill him. They weren't true children of Abraham, meaning that they weren't true children of faith. Why were they following Jesus? Maybe it seemed like a good thing to do. They followed the crowds. So the question that's posed to us in this time of Lent, why do we follow Jesus? Do we really believe that he is who he says he is? Do we really believe that he is the son of the living God? Do we really believe that he has given us his flesh to eat and his blood to drink? That under the appearance of bread and wine, he comes to us and he nourishes us? Do we really believe? Or do we just come to church because it's a social thing to do? Or do we truly worship? These are the many questions that we pose to ourselves, or at least should pose to ourselves during the season of Lent, to truly reflect on our relationship with God. Because once we have that true understanding of who we are as disciples of Christ, as who we are as children of God, then we can come to see more readily how it is that we are to live in the image of the God who created us. How we are to treat our brothers and sisters. These Jews that Jesus was speaking to, they seemed to think because they were Jews, they were children of Abraham, that they were better than the other Christians, Christians who became Christians through the apostles, but they didn't first become Jews and then become Christians. They said that they were descendants of Abraham. So they tended to see themselves as better than others. 
we were looking around the church today, we can see many different people that think their way of worship is better than others. They worship according to the liturgy of this pope, or they worship according to the liturgy of that pope, or they follow the teachings of this pope, or that pope, or this saint, or that saint, or this devotion, or that devotion, and think they're better than others. The reality is we're all called to be brothers and sisters of Christ. We're all called to give to God what it is that we have to give our hearts, what we truly believe in our hearts, and give that back to God. For he has given us himself. As the solemnity of Easter approaches, dear friends, let our prayer to the Lord be all the more insistent that all of us and the whole multitude of the baptized, together with the entire world, may come to share more abundantly in this sacred mystery. That God may be pleased to increase faith and understanding of catechumens who are to be initiated by holy baptism. Let us pray to the Lord. That peoples in need may find help, and that peace and security may be firmly established everywhere. Let us pray to the Lord. That all who are afflicted or suffering temptation, especially in this time of uncertainty, this time of pestilence, that they may be strengthened by his grace, let us pray to the Lord. Of all of us, we may learn to distribute the fruits of self-denial for the good of those in need. Let us pray to the Lord. For our current situation, through the intercession of St. Rockwell, O great St. Rocco, deliver us, we beseech you, from the scourges of God. Through your intercession, preserve our bodies from contagious diseases and our souls from the contagions of sin. Obtain for us healthy air, but above all, purity of heart. Assist us to make good use of health, to bear suffering with patience, and after your example, to live in the practice of penance and charity we may one day enjoy the happiness which you have merited by your virtues. St. Rocco, pray for us. St. Rocco, pray for us. St. Rocco, pray for us. And for the prayers that remain in the secret of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. St. John, patron of our diocese, Pray for us. Mary, under the title of the Immaculate Conception, patroness of our diocese and our cathedral, pray for us. Saint Andrew, pray for us. Saint Martin, pray for us. Saint Michael the Archangel, protect us. Have mercy, O Lord, on the prayers of your church, and turn with compassion to the hearts that bow before you that those you make shares in the divine mystery may never be left without your assistance through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. 
fruit of the earth, and work of human hands, it will become for us a bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Through the divine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual bread. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive back, O Lord, the sacrificial offerings which you have given to be offered to the honor of your name, and grant that they may become remedies for our healing through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For through the saving passion of your Son, the whole world has received a heart to confess the infinite power of your majesty, since by the wondrous power of the cross, your judgment on the world is now revealed and the authority of Christ crucified. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you, and for many, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body of Christ, we may be gathered to your body by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Christian, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in their mercy. Welcome them in the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs of eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look God on our sins and on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever. And then, the peace of the Lord be with you all. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
God has brought us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood for forgiveness of sins. Let us pray. May the mysteries we have received, O Lord, bring us heavenly medicine, that they may purge all evil from our heart and strengthen us with eternal protection through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. Attend, Almighty God, to the prayers of your people, and as you endow them with confident hope in your compassion, let them feel as ever the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, Mass is in. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved and strengthened me. I once was lost, but now and found, was blind, but now I see. Was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear, the hour I first believed. The Lord has promised good to me, His word my hope re-secures. He will my shield and portion be as long as life and Many dangers, toils, and snares I have already found. His grace has brought me safe thus far, and grace will be. When we've been there ten thousand years, bright shining as the sun, with no less days to sing God's praise than when we first begun.